Indian cities are growing at an astonishing rate. By 2030, around 590 million people will live in Indian cities. This urbanization will come at the cost of biodiversity as concrete structures fill up agricultural fields and forests. While most animals will be driven away by this, there are a few that can adapt and flourish in these new settings. They are dogs, pigeons and monkeys. Humans have an affinity for certain species. This is why dogs, monkeys and pigeons have always been part of our lives. But in recent decades, their numbers have reached unmanageable levels in urban areas. To understand the magnitude of this problem, let us look at each of these animals and see why their numbers are seen as a threat to an urban way of life. A majority of humans do not consider dogs to be a problem. Yet, these human companions are slowly being seen as a menace to civilization. It is hard to believe, but in 2022, India reported over 5,200 dog bites every day. That is more than 1.9 million in that year alone. In 2021, India recorded 47,291 rabies cases, 96% of which were canine inflicted. So based on estimates uh, done by, by a senior scientist in a, in a book called uh, Free Ranging Dogs and Wildlife Conservation, uh, in 2004, he estimated the dog population in India to be about uh, 60 million. Um, so humans are very much responsible. Now we are directly and indirectly responsible. We generate lots of garbage. And uh, you know we have poor garbage disposal mechanisms. So dogs scavenge on that. Directly responsible because we keep feeding dogs on the streets, either because they are associated with our house, like in, in villages or in cities, because people have made it like a hobby to feed dogs, um, thinking they are, you know, being saviors of, of these dogs. And in fact, the policies of the government of India, the Animal Welfare Board, keep encouraging this kind of irresponsible behavior to keep maintaining dogs in the streets. Population control of animals in India is governed by the Animal Birth Control or ABC rules. These rules were first instituted in 2001 and later amended in 2023. ABC rules make the municipalities responsible for operating and maintaining ABC centers where they catch, sterilize and return dogs to their earlier habitat. A dog census report done by Wildlife SOS in 2009 found that the municipalities lack the proper infrastructure to carry out their duties. If you try and understand what ABC is supposed to do, you'll understand also then why that the, the program won't work. The fact is ABC has not been attempted anywhere in rural in, in India at all. Why? Because it's very difficult to implement. How, how are people going to go from village to village, catching millions of dogs and sterilizing them? It's virtually impossible to do that. Okay, where do we have the infrastructure to do, to do this? So most of the focus has only been on cities. So in large Indian cities, where the dog population can be in several lakhs, um, sterilizing a few thousand here and a few thousand here makes absolutely no difference. When it comes to dogs, there is no consensus on the solution. Given the current situation, India has to make unpopular choices such as implementing stringent pet ownership laws, euthanizing dogs that carry the day rabies virus, building shelters and prohibition of feeding in public places. Human macaque interaction in India, like in several South Asian countries, has an undercurrent of religion and reverence. Feeding them is an act of devotion for some. For others, they are harbingers of chaos. Monkeys also carry rabies and other zoonotic diseases like hemorrhagic Kyasanur forest disease and also cause damage to properties and crops. Around a thousand monkey bites are also reported every day in India. As compared to 1980s, the population kept increasing and the reason was humans influenced monkeys in a negative way. Number one, they they snatched their foraging grounds. Second is the food. 
man has been feeding a high starch high fat addictive foods to monkeys which made monkeys slow they started relying on these foods then going and looking for natural foods delhi the capital of india has been dealing with the issue of monkeys for the past 20 years in 2000 the delhi high court banned the feeding of monkeys in public places there were also schemes to translocate monkeys to the sola bhatti wildlife sanctuary on the delhi haryana border but our long tailed ancestors have always found a way back as once they become comfortable in city spaces they are settled in for good especially with food around In March this year, the Union Environment Minister Bhupender Yadav released 14 guidelines to address human-wildlife conflict, which recommend surgical sterilization of male as well as female macaques. And even though sterilization was tried as an option, studies have found that it makes monkeys more aggressive. They have become too aggressive. They're too agitated. Uh, we have just disrupted everything about their lives. so let's calm them let's not trap them let's just let them be uh, till they stop raiding till they stop biting or chasing or destroying property of human beings and to reach there we'll have to create areas which are green areas which are monkey friendly there is a need to create suitable habitats for monkeys Some states like Odisha, Kerala and Telangana are already working towards this. But without a mechanism in place to assess their impact, it is difficult to gauge what works and what does not. Mornings in Delhi's Chitranjan Park, like so many other neighborhoods, begins by scattering a fistful of bajra to hundreds of hungry visitors. Feeding pigeons has been etched on to our memories for a long time now. We see it all the time. We also see what happens afterwards. With the food taken care of, the birds defecate and breed visibly all around us. The population of pigeons has skyrocketed by 100% in the last 25 years along with the skyscrapers and they carry a handful of diseases with them. Pulmonologists are certain that pigeons are responsible for the rising cases of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, a lung disease associated with pigeon droppings. So, with the increase in pigeon population, uh, as with most other birds, also what we commonly call as bird fanciers disease, or if we if we have to name it a medical term, it is like hypersensitivity pneumonitis is one of the common disease which you know which is known to be caused by pigeon antigen. So. the pigeon droppings the pigeon for all of them they have they shed some antigen uh, which causes a damage in the human lungs when we inhale it it causes a damage in the human lungs and in that process is sometimes it's like a permanent scar or permanent damage that you know that remains inside pigeons have adapted to urban india largely because of three reasons first they have generalist diets and food available around urban settings is good for them Second, they are ledge nesters with buildings providing a nice alternative to what was once the natural habitat. Third, unlike many other birds, pigeons nest throughout the year. To add to these advantages, pigeons hardly have any natural predators in urban areas. If pigeons are indeed a public health risk, what can be done to reduce that threat? Uh, if we actually have to start with, we have to uh, talk with the environmentalists to. See, you know, to to make sure why the population, why there is so much increase in population. Is it only deforestation, or is it is it that we are feeding the pigeons and that is an easy mode? That is why the population is going out of proportion. That is one thing. Uh, if there are you know pigeons living in your duct areas in the uh, buildings, or uh, just you know try to be away from them. If somebody is already prone for lung diseases, respiratory respiratory diseases like asthma, or you know COPD. then it's you know again best to be away from pigeons as far as possible we humans are social animals feeding animals and trying to take care of them for many of us 
is an act of kindness but we will have to realize that it is causing more harm than good today the number of our urban acquaintances has reached unmanageable levels in urban areas posing serious health challenges for peaceful coexistence curbing the population of these species may not be enough it requires a change in people's etiquette so that these benign species do not become an urban menace